Well, welcome to this year's Star Sports Greyhound Derby preview. As you can see, I'm joined by uh, three men who know exactly what they're talking about and they'll lead you through many of the contenders for this year. Irish broadcaster Ian Fortune is here to uh, fill us in on all the happenings from Ireland. Martin Chapman will be telling us all about the betting. And of course, defending champion trainer Kevin Hutton is here. Uh, obviously, you'll be defending your title with Dorota's Wildcat, and I'm sure we'll talk plenty about uh, that absolute superstar. First of all, let's talk about the leading English contenders, and uh, Martin, you're going to give us a, a quick rundown as far as the betting's concerned. What leads the way? So, Wildcat's favourite again after last year. It wasn't favourite last year, but he's 14 to 1 favourite this year. We tried to lay him 18 to 1 with a Biggest price for a while after his defeat at home and the defeat at Swindon, but we've actually yield now and we're, we're favourite of 14 to 1, 16 droopies of herb, obviously. So the 1 2 last year are the 1 2 again. It's a, let's say a lot maybe about dogs coming through, but the first two in a bet and then the first two in a bet in the game for this year are 1 2 from last year. Then we're 22 to 1 about King Turbo, 24 Magical Bowl, who Kevin will be on about, uh, 28 Sea Glass Phantom, and 33 Rising Brandy. Also 25 to 1 Martin's Town Band, but that's mainly because of the massive liabilities that we got with a uh, we labour dogs to lose an absolute fortune, so I think we'll be selling the office if that wins, but hopefully we can we can get him beat. I think there's a few better than him in a competition, but we shall see. Derosa Wildcat, a very worthy favourite, Kevin. Uh, I'm going to start by asking you, how is he as things stand? He's very well. He's um, he's just about where we where we want him, really. Um, he's had two, about two or three fabulous trials at Nottingham now. Um, he seems back to his best and we're, we're delighted with where, where he's at. So um, very much all systems go. The quickest stop to go around Nottingham so far. So the, the times are certainly there. You had your problems with him. You had an issue that you had to clear up earlier in the year. We did, yeah. He had, um, it turned out he had a, a bacterial infection, um, which was only shown up when we sent the blood results to, to Ireland, in fact, to be checked. And um, came back with a very specific antibiotic that we needed to get him on. And um, thankfully, it was such a quick turnaround, 10 days on tablets, and within a couple of weeks, he was back to the dog. You know, we, we know we should have, and um, his work at home has been absolutely brilliant, and uh, his trials have been top class. So um, we've definitely got the, the wildcat back, and um, I think he's as good as ever. Despite the fact he's now a veteran, four years old, is age against him, do you think, or is it irrelevant in his case? Um, I think it's very difficult for a four-year-old dog to, to win an English derby. There wouldn't be too many um, in the history books, but we've always kept in lightning race. You know, he's um, he's been a very lucky dog with injuries. He's not really carried anything at all, so um, he's fresh, he's well, he's lightly raced, um, and I think he's as good as ever, so yeah, why not? We've only had five uh, dual derby winners so far. Can he do it this year, do you think? Mm, absolutely, he can do it. Yeah, so he's, I think he's as, as good as he was last year. He loves Nottingham. He's got terrific four on there, winning the select stakes and the Eclipse. Um, and I say he's, we've never vote, never overdone him, so um, I, I don't see why he can't you know, put his name in the history books and, and win another derby. It's going to be very tough, we all know that, but um, he's as good as anything this year. Uh, yeah, and I know you're very bullish about the Irish chance of winning this year's English derby, and I'm sure we'll talk plenty about that. But <coughs> I'm sure we will. Yeah, very much so. Um, I think he's a proper dog. I think if you actually copy and paste what we said about him last year, it equates to this year. He's a dog that does everything. He goes up to a corner, he flies down the back, and he certainly gets the trip. He's a derby winner. He's been there, done that. Um, a lot of the dogs this year, whereas last year when it was Toaster, we could speak of their previous experiences in Toaster. The Irish dogs coming over here, no experience around Nottingham, um, whereas the Wildcat has already won an Eclipse there. It's clear that it's up there with perhaps his favourite circuit. He's a dog that really handles the place. I was lucky enough to be there at Eclipse night, the night he won. And um, yeah, it was he was fairly uh, fairly impressive that night. I was a bit more bullish, let's say, about a month ago mm. when Wildcat wasn't quite flying around <laughs> Nottingham trials and there was a cloud and we were thinking Verve might be just lacking a yard early. And all of a sudden, okay, Verve was beaten in the Scottish Derby the other night from a, a very tricky draw out in five. Wildcat's since been flying around uh, Nottingham in trials. And Verve, despite that tricky draw, the other ran very well, showed plenty of pace. Yeah, I suppose Ireland's main hope is the fact that the two big contenders for England, in terms of the betting, mm. are, are getting on a bit. Okay, Verve is only three, I know, but he's a lot of experience, he's a lot of racing, whereas Wildcat is actually sort of likely to race, but he is four years of age. That's the one thing we'd be clinging on to in terms of taking on the English challenge. You have to take a magical bail office, which is a big <laughs> problem. He's the only dog I've actually backed thus far. Um, he's a proper greyhound, you know. And I think he's a dog that matured a lot um, over the last six or eight months. And we saw him during the Irish Derby campaign, during the Easter Cup campaign in, in Shelburne Park, and now he's back. 
I, I was going to say back home, but he's, uh, he has two homes. We borrowed him. He's, yeah. he's equally loved in both homes, but he's a greyhound that can really take nothing. The long run to the corner will certainly suit him. You touched on Jupiter's Verve, Martin. How does this year's Verve as a three-year-old compare to the real youngster that was in last year's? Derby? I was actually amazed to see he was only a three-year-old looking at his form last night and going back through, and I just thought, my God, he's been around forever, the dog who he seems to have been. And you think he's only a puppy last year. Well, as Ian said, I just think he might have lost half a yard of early and maybe around not him, you know, he can pick dogs up and he's got blind in middle pace still, and I think that's still, you know, always been his, his potent weapon. And he ran well from that draw in the Scottish Derby. But uh, yeah, just a little bit of me just thinks. I watched him last year in the in the Laurels when they say Bramble Milburn completely swamped him for early pace, but that's a pretty fast dog there. And you know, yeah, he's he's there. So he's got another year when he's back. You know, he's he's three years old now. Often he's been around forever, but he did a fast dog. But listen, I mean, last year in the final, if he'd have turned Andy Wildcat, took the ping last year in the final, Kev got him out in the moment when it mattered. And I think other than that, you know, Verver the Verver probably won. They've been talking at you know the defending champion. So it's it's the way it is. But yeah, I mean. I look at the one two from last year and think, Verve, is he just that, lost that little bit of yard of early? Maybe for me, he has. Yeah, with Wildcat, you had some great battles with Verve last year, and we hope to see more of that. But what about Magical Bell? He uh, took a tumble in his last race in Ireland. We know that he came off a bit sore. I think you've had to nurse a few injuries. How is he? He's okay. He's okay. He did, he did come off with a few issues after he was knocked over in the um, semi finals of the Easter Cup, which was a, a great shame, actually, because this puts uh, two or three weeks behind where we'd ideally want to be with the dog. Um, but he, he came back in magnificent order, and um, uh, like like Ian said, he's matured into a into a proper dog now. You know those those six or eight months of racing throughout the Irish Derby, which he was brilliant in, um, is, is really made the dog. Um, so I think he's he's the perfect age. Um, he's definitely good enough to win a Derby, and um, if he keeps breaking like he has been at Nottingham so far, I think he's a, a massive massive player. He's he's a he's a proper dog. As things stand, King Turbo trialled around Nottingham on Monday and went very well, 29.48. His name will be in the book when entries close next Monday. Uh, perhaps not his ideal track, Martin, but a super fast dog. There's no doubt in his ability. Just a ridiculously fast dog. We saw the speed he showed the other night in, in that race in the first round of the Scottish Derby. You know, he virtually got knocked over at the corner and then just took off. I mean, obviously he had his issues back in the past with his disqualification early in his career. You see a dog with that much speed sometimes, when you see him going that fast, you think what's going on in the head, something might happen at one day stage, but you know, he's obviously a really, really quick dog, but he's got to do it right, and again, he's, uh, you know, again, he's prone to miss the break, and he's a quick dog, and I think Mab knows that as well, and the fact he's, uh, you know, had a little moment for a couple of years, he's finally got to win to the derby now, when Nottingham haven't changed the rules, but it'd be good to see him in the derby. Other couple of quick dogs as well, so you've got Roxanne Nidge, who also was a, had a mother and father in the former national sprint final, at, um, at Brisbane final at Sheffield the other night, He's sort of half 50 50 to get there in here at the moment. Yeah. See Glass Phantom, who on his dial looks one of the quickest dogs in the country, mm. but mm. he's a real trial dog. He gets dogs around him at the corner and he goes up in the air sometimes. And if you get the run a bend and get the run round dogs, I think he's probably arguably I'll say one of the fastest dogs around at the moment, certainly in the UK. I mean, he did something like a 20, I think he did something like a 29, 48 and hope with over 515. That's absolutely flying for a dog like that. And of course, Rising Brandy, who was uh, you know, well pulled up for the, for the race last year. Obviously got that injury in the, uh, the quarter final. They like, patched him up and brought him out for the semi-final. He's not been really seen since, but to be fair, Matt Dartmouth gets him back. It's been an amazing performance, but you know, he's did a very, very fast dog and capable as well. That's why he's, uh, you know, only 30 for the bet him. Well, hopefully, Ian, that's left you uh, quite fearful of our English team. Uh, and that's pretty much it for the uh, leading English contenders. Uh, join us again. Uh, we'll be uh, hearing more about the leading Irish contenders heading over here for the Star Sports Greyhound Derby.